Hi, frontal lobe epilepsy is common and seizures are very weird and bizarre. And that's why some people uh, got misdiagnosed as having psychiatric issues or sleep problems, which seizures are happening during the night and during sleep. And today we'll talk in details about the diagnosis and treatment of frontal lobe epilepsy. The frontal lobe is very large area of the brain and it is responsible for lots of functions, including motor and movements, planning of the movements, also, it is uh, doing lots with emotion and psychiatric uh, control, and it is uh, controlling the personality, impulse, all of those are controlled by the frontal lobe. Also planning and even language and talking, all of them are part of that frontal lobe. What causes frontal lobe epilepsy? Well, there are multiple causes of the frontal lobe epilepsy. First of all is trauma. So we know that the frontal lobe is sticking to the skull directly and any hit to the head, usually it can cause some damage to the frontal lobe and cause it seizures. Also, it can be due to a stroke that happened in the frontal lobe or there is abnormal cell formation that even happen during the formation of the brain in the womb which is called cortical dysplasia or other uh, for malformations in the brain cells and it can be due to infection uh, there is encephalitis or meningitis that can cause seizures or it can be due to inflammation when the immune system attacks the brain such as autoimmune encephalitis which presents as seizures and psychiatric issues and it can be due to tumors as well growing in the frontal lobe and sometimes can be due to a genetic cause such as the rare condition autosomal dominant nocturnal frontal lobe epilepsy which is seizures that are happening in the frontal lobe that usually happens in the night and tends to run in family. How do frontal lobe seizures present Light. Well, the frontal lobe seizures tend to be very bizarre and can happen during sleep. What happens is, is that during sleep, the brain will calm down and the only thing that will be working hard is the connections between the deep brain, the thalamus and the frontal lobe. And sometimes the seizure will sneak into that connection and cause the seizures during sleep. The seizures often explosive, happens very suddenly, very, very bizarre and very quick. Usually people will have abnormal movements, hypermotor means moving too much, flipping around, shaking in arms and legs and screaming and sometimes fear or sometimes even laughter during the seizure and some people will have bicycling movements or pelvic thrusting or even like sexual uh, like movements all of them can be seizures that happen in the frontal lobe and and the face during the frontal lobe can have a grimace and uh, even pouting and and abnormal movements in the face and sometimes because of all of those bizarre movements can be misdiagnosed as psychogenic non-epileptic seizures but it the difference is that in frontal lobe epilepsy the seizures are short and explosive in in nature and happens out of sleep and in non-epileptic seizures usually the seizures are much much more prolonged and do not come out of sleep i remember a girl that she had frontal lobe seizures every time during the night she will wake up having seizure crawl crawl all the way to the kitchen out of the of her bedroom also because the frontal lobe controls the movement seizures can often happen with movement so because it controls the eye movement usually the seizure when it starts will be forced eye deviation like the eye will look all the way and the body will look to one side and also it can be shaking in the face arm and leg and it can also start in one area and then spread to arm and then spread to the leg and spread to the whole body and this phenomenon is well described before in history it's called Jacksonian March and it was named by Dr. Helen Jackson who described this phenomena in his wife who had seizures which can be excellent to be married to a neurologist if you have epilepsy and also the urine control happens in the frontal lobe so frontal lobe seizures can have all of a sudden urine incontinence and I remember there was a girl that she came to our neurology clinic and her complaint is that she's sitting there she got engaged and then every time she's sitting with her fiance she will have a sudden urine uh, incontinence which was very weird and we tested everything and it came it, it turned out that this was a type of a seizure and once we treated the seizure things improved all right that leads us to how can we diagnose frontal lobe epilepsy? Well, the first and the best step in diagnosis is to get an excellent history and evaluation. So it is important to get the details of how the seizures look like and it will be amazing if you can take a video of somebody takes a video of you having the seizure and bring it to us. And lots of people now, they're having cameras in their bedroom and they're motion detecting to every time the patient has a seizure, the camera will record and they bring it to me and to the clinic, which can be a great asset. It can be misdiagnosed as 
sleep, we can sometimes do sleep studies to rule out any sleep disorders. And the second thing we can do is a brain MRI, which is an, uh, taking excellent and detailed pictures of the brain to diagnose the area if there's any scar or abnormal formations or anything that can cause the seizures. And the third step is doing an EEG. EEG is a brainwave test that can detect the electrical activity of the brain and in frontal lobe seizures we will see some sparks of electricity called epileptiform discharges in the frontal lobe area. And because the frontal lobe is deep and buried in, in the skull and it is away from the scalp, uh, sometimes and even often the EEG will be completely normal because it's just limited to the surface and could not see the deep areas where the spikes are and we need other detailed analysis to uh, diagnose those types of seizures. And what is the treatment for frontal lobe epilepsy? Well the treatment for frontal lobe epilepsy starts with medications and medication choice is patient specific. If you want to be a good neurologist we take the good history and know the background of the patient and choose the right medicine for them. We have about 31 anti-seizure medications and not all of them work for everybody and make sure that do not have side effects that can affect the patient. So if somebody has psychiatric side effects, for example, has depression, anxiety, PTSD, you give them levetiracetam, which is Kipra, and that can worsen their condition. So it is important to choose the right medicine for the right patient. And luckily, 50 to 70% of the time, seizures will completely stop with medications and uh, then things will be good. But there is about a quarter of the time, 25%, that seizures do not respond to medications and that time we can do surgical treatment, which if we can find the scar or the abnormal cells, we can take it out surgically and stop the seizures, which tends to be very successful when it, when it is happening. And if the surgery cannot be done for any reason, if we could not find the area or it was coming from multiple areas of the brain, we can implant devices such as the responsive neurostimulation, RNS device, the deep brain stimulation, DBS, which can go the wires all deep in the brain, or the biggest nerve stimulator in the neck. And I explained in details those treatments and the surgical treatment of epilepsy in a different video that I can link it down in the description below. And other options will be the diet therapy, which can be like a ketogenic diet that is speci specific for epilepsy and can help with the treatment of the seizures. And if seizures do not respond to medications, then this is called drug-resistant epilepsy and there are multiple steps that we can do to diagnose drug-resistant epilepsy and treat it appropriately with surgical treatment that you can learn all about in this video and stay healthy and see you in the next one. Salam.